What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Tribes of Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm going to show you how I made these beautiful, delicious, smoky, porky, juicy, amazing, scratch made smoked pork belly bow buns. Coming up! This is some meat! Patty dry. And what I got here is a pretty typical pork belly. Picked this up at my local HEB. Nothing too fancy. This is like half or maybe a third of a pork belly. And looking pretty good. And today we're making bao buns, which is something I've been wanting to do for a really long time because as far as baked goods that pair well with barbecue go, I think bao buns might be at the top of that list. Traditionally, you're gonna see a lot of pork belly, which is what we're gonna do today. But I can't see how a brisket bao or a beef rib bao or anything wouldn't be delicious. But before we get the seasoned up and throw it on the pit, I'm gonna cut it down a little bit. Just so it fits on our buns a little easier. So we're gonna start by just kind of squaring it up. Save that for a little snack. And then we're probably gonna go right around, right around there. Looking pretty good. Part gets a little thin, so I might trim this up a little bit. And we'll just take this part and cut it in half. Beautiful looking pork belly. That should be the right size, but it really depends on how big I make those bow. But let's go ahead and get these seasoned up. And for our rub today, keeping it classic, some good old Chud's Barbecue SPG. Get that nice peppery bark on there that I'm after. Just a nice even coating. Flip them over, hit the tops, and of course, folks, we're not gonna forget the sides. That would be a rookie move. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and fire up the pit. If my boot was a bow bun, it would be stuffed with snake. And on the pit we go. Gonna be rocking a pretty typical barbecue cook on these, right around 275, maybe upwards of 300, just to build up some nice bark, get some color on these bad boys, get that fat starting to render, and just cook them till they're nice and tender. So I'll check back in on these in a little bit. Next up, let's get that dough made for our bow buns. Starting going into the mixer here with some milk, some melted butter, yeast, and give that a little mixy poo. Next up, our sugar, some bread flour, Kosher salt, baking powder, and some baking soda. And knead that till a nice smooth ball has been formed. And just like that, after about 10 minutes of kneading, everything is pulling away nice and clean, which is what we're after. So now we're just gonna give this a couple more kneads until it comes into a nice smooth ball. Pretty dry dough to start out with. Beautiful. Now into a grease bowl we go. And we're gonna let this double in size for the next hour or so. Next up, let's go ahead and get our pickled carrot and daikon salad. Next up, we gotta julienne these things, and I figured it'd be pretty easy if I just use this bad boy. And just slice these up into some little matchsticks. Beautiful. And same with the carrots. Beautiful. Gonna toss these into a bowl. Now typically at this point you'd treat these kind of like kimchi where you'd salt them pretty heavily, let them steep out for about 20, 30 minutes, rinse them really well, then add a pickling brine and stick them in the fridge overnight. But I don't wanna wait overnight to eat these. So I'm gonna try a quick hot pickle. So into this pot, I'm gonna go in with some water, some sugar, some kosher salt, a couple of chilies for a little extra heat and some rice vinegar. I'm just gonna bring that up to a simmer until everything is hot and nicely dissolved. And once up to a boil, over the veg we go. Ooh, yeah, this is gonna soften them up and add some lovely flavor. So I'm gonna set these aside and let these cook away, pop them in the fridge after a little bit, and once they're cool, they're ready to go. Next up, let's go ahead and get a sauce ready for this eventual pork belly. Into this pot, we're gonna go in with a squeeze of some oil here. Butter would work, that's just some avocado oil. And in with our ginger, that was an aggressive amount of ginger. Also, our garlic. And toast that down for just a couple minutes, making sure nothing burns, but we release some flavors and toast it up a little bit. And now to the theme song of the Ice Cream Man, we're gonna go in with a couple chili de arbol, one cinnamon stick, and a couple star anise. And just let those toast in there for just a couple of minutes. Oh, it's smelling so good. And now I'm gonna go in with some soy sauce, as well as some homemade smoky pork stock. Oh yeah. A little shaoxing cooking wine, some brown sugar, 
and our scallions. Now I'm just gonna bring that up to a simmer, let all that sugar dissolve, let all these flavors meld. Maybe let it reduce a little bit so we have a nice sweet and savory kind of sticky sauce. God, it smells so good. Now that our bao bun dough has doubled in size, out it comes. Boop. And we're just gonna pat the air out of it. It doesn't feel too sticky, but I may need to throw some flour down. But we're just gonna get this rolled out nice and thin. And uh, I definitely did not need to make this much dough. I forgot that when I did a test run of this a couple weeks ago, I cut this recipe in half. But you know, I bet these will probably freeze up pretty well. But now I'm gonna grab this ring mold here, and we're just gonna start punching these out. And of course, depending on the size of your ring mold, you can make these as big or as small as you like. I bet some little past app baby bows would be pretty cute. Beautiful. Ooh, this is satisfying. Reuse this dough to make some more. And now it's time to fold these up. So I'm gonna grab some spray oil here and just give all these a nice light little spray. That's gonna make it so they don't stick together after they're steamed. And we can actually open them up and fill them with stuff. And spray a Wagyu beef tallow. Doesn't sound like a bad option on these. But simply enough, now we're gonna go around and fold them all up and then give it a nice little roll to flatten it out just a little bit more. And onto a baking sheet we go. Now I'm gonna cover these up so they don't dry out while we go ahead and get our steam basket ready. And to steam these off, you can use a lot of different things. You can probably do this in a rice cooker or look online for some life hacks, but I just got these steamer baskets. So now we're gonna take these that have proofed for about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, just to puff up a little bit more. And we're just gonna get these lined up. These do have these little liners in there. If you don't have these, I'd use some parchment or something like that. I've actually never tried it with these, but we're gonna hope for the best. Lovely. Trying to make sure they're not gonna touch because these are gonna expand when the heat hits them. And I don't want them all to stick together. Beautiful. And over here on the burner, I've got a pot that almost fits this perfectly. And we've got some water in there. I'm gonna drop that down to a gentle simmer. We're gonna place this right on top. Eh, good enough. And we're gonna let these simmer away for about five to eight minutes. And just like that, out these come, looking just so good. Nice and fluffy, nice and thick. Smelling really nice too. And no stickage, beautiful. Ow! So now I'm gonna pull these out, pop them on the sheet tray, probably throw some plastic wrap on these to keep them warm so they don't dry out too much until we're ready to stuff them with some pork. One last thing before we pull that pork belly off is I'm gonna revisit this sauce that's been sitting, just kind of steeping, making sure the cinnamon and everything is getting into the sauce, but I don't want it to be chunky, so now I'm gonna go ahead and strain it. Not entirely necessary. You could just go ahead and pull the cinnamon sticks out, but I want a smooth sauce today, and I also want to thicken it up a little bit. So what I've got here is a cornstarch slurry. This is just some cornstarch and some water, and I'm just gonna start whisking this in until it's as thick as I want it to be. And just like that, this is thickened up a lot, and it's definitely gonna get a little thicker as it cools down as well. Ooh, that is good. And just like that, after probably about five hours, this pork belly is looking Nice and soft, nice and pillowy on top, beautiful bark on there, and is probing pretty tender, but not fully tender. Rocking about 189, 190, might carry up to 195, because I want this to still be a nice clean slice without shredding up on us too much. So, I'm gonna let this cool, we'll slice in, and it's time to stuff some bow buns. All right, I've let this pork belly rest for a little bit, but uh, I'm getting antsy and I really wanna see how this came out. So let's get a few slices, shall we? That's a very dull slicer. Maybe we'll try it with a straight blade. Looking nice and juicy. I'm struggling to get a clean slice. Maybe I should let this rest a little longer. There we go. Gotta love a classic juicy pork belly on the old offset. Am I right? I mean, just fatty, nicely rendered, juicy, good bark on that. Smells so good. Mm. This is a little bite of that burn end. That is phenomenal. Mm. So juicy, so flavorful, perfectly seasoned. If y'all haven't made pork belly with some SPG on the offset in a while, highly recommend it. Beautiful. And that is pretty much exactly the texture I was going for. You know, holds up, you get a clean bite out of it, but it also, you know, just kind of folds apart. Love it. Mm. All right, first things first, we're gonna grab some of our pork belly here, looking absolutely beautiful. And I'm just gonna dip this right into this sauce here. Just get a nice glaze on that. Beautiful. Do a couple of them. You could brush this on, you could paint it on, but I think this is gonna work out pretty well. Lovely stuff. And now finally, grab yourself a beautiful bow bun. These are just feeling so nice, nice and fluffy. Open that up. We're gonna take some of our pickled carrot and daikon salad thing we made. Go in with a little bit of that, add some freshness and crunch. Then grab some of our nicely sliced glazed pork belly. Tuck that right on in there as well. And then from here you can go on with pretty much whatever you like. I've seen a lot of people putting peanuts and cashews and things on there. So I just got some peanuts that I threw in the food processor. Add a little extra crunch, maybe a little bit of scallion on top or cilantro or both. Really, whatever you want to do. I think having some nice herbs and freshness on there will be very nice. And there it is, a beautiful pork belly bow. Let's make some more. You can see that nonstick spray worked out perfectly. No stickage. Shove some vegetables in there. 
big old slab of pork belly and the possibilities, folks. I mean, what should I put in a bao bun next? Oh, it's so beautiful. And there it is, folks. Pretty quick and easy to make, honestly, but just look at the magnificent pile. And we could make so many more of these with the amount of buns and pork belly I made. But uh, yeah, I think it's time to dive on in. I gotta tell you, folks, I've been wanting to make bao buns for a very long time. And uh, I gotta say, they're pretty easy to make, you know? And those look pretty good to me, but let's see how they taste. Mm. Oh man, mm. that flavor is so good. That ginger heavy soy based sauce we made pairs perfectly with that smoky fatty pork belly. And all the vegetables on here actually work out pretty well because pork belly can be daunting to some because it's so fatty. But the freshness of the green onions and the vinegar and that pickle that we made really makes for a great bite. And also these buns are a lot sweeter than I was expecting and it pairs really well with pork belly. Mm. That's so fluffy, that texture is so good. I like it. Oh. Mm. It's just a flavor bomb. Mm. Soft bread, soft pork belly, but then you get that crunch from the carrot and the daikon. Mm. Mm. That's a keeper. Brooke. Yes. Would you like to try a pork belly bao bun? Yes, I love bao bun. Choose your favorite. I think that's probably the prettiest one. It is. <laughs> that's why I chose it. You just got to take a big chomp, chomping bite out of it. Mm. It's like a fluffy taco. I love bao buns. They're really tasty. Oh my God. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, is this peanut? Mm-hmm. Okay, I thought it was garlic at first. No. Mm. There's garlic in the sauce, but I stringed it out. It's so good. I could eat 12 of these. I don't think you could. It is nice, though. I was just saying the richness of the fatty pork belly is really mm -hmm. balanced out with the bready and the veg in mm. here. Yeah, we definitely mm -hmm. got to make these more often. Mm -hmm. I'm eating this one, too. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's a good sign, folks. Mm-hmm. Mm -mm -mm. It's such a cute little package, too. Look at that. Picture perfect. Perfectly flavored, perfect sweet, salty, savory umami. Mm-hmm. I've heard that word. Yeah, it's, a, it's definitely a word. <laughs> All right, Brooke, real question. What should we throw in a bao bun next? Cucumber, jalapeno, some crispy shallots, maybe. Mm-hmm. A spicy mayo. Ooh. The scallions, definitely, definitely. Gotta have that freshness in there. Yeah, I probably shouldn't eat any more pork belly. There's a whole pile of it. I made an alarming amount. Actually, I guess I do need to make one more because there's none left and we have to do the official taste test. All right, she is a simple creature, so she's just gonna get a piece of pork belly in some bao. Oops, love the texture on that bao. Well, you know this one's a winner because Brooke is actively eating her fourth bao bun right now. I think this one's vegetarian though. Gotta make it. What are you doing in there? You're on number five. That's number five. <laughs> Ooh, very oaky. It's good though. All right, y'all, that is it. That's how to make some absolutely fantastic smoky pork belly bao buns. I highly recommend giving this one a try. I've never seen Brooke eat five of anything that I've ever made on this channel, so that's gotta tell you something. But also, that dough is super forgiving, and you can put whatever you want in there, and it's a great way to please your friends and family. But all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button on YouTube and by dropping a like on this video. If you give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I'd love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thanks for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.